Hello friends. I'm at the end or nearly at the end of a very busy month. So I just wanted to do a quick video. This is gonna be a nice, just casual little book video talking about some of my favorite books in the cozy or cozy fantasy or cottage core kind of vibe that I don't see mentioned as often. These aren't the big new flashy releases that you always hear about, but some that I have enjoyed for a long time. So let's get to it. First, we have Ella Montgomery's The Blue Castle, which I actually haven't read in a very long time. It's on my to-do list actually to do like a big Ella Montgomery reread. So if you're down for like an epic Ella Montgomery catalog deep dive at some point, I'm so in. If anybody wants to read along with me, start accumulating your books now. This one was one of my favorites when I last read all the Ella Montgomery books. You hear a lot of talk about Anne of Green Gables. My favorite is actually Emily of New Moon. And this is one of her adult novels. It's a nice romance and the heroine is 29. She's kind of old for the time. Actually even kind of old for romances now sometimes. And the heroine lives with kind of overbearing family members. She hasn't really had a life of her own. And of course, everything is about to change. I would tell more but I definitely need to reread it first but anyway this is on my reread list this year my copy is in the worst condition <laughs> then we have Lark Rise to Candleford by Flora Thompson isn't this just like the cutest little tiny book like it's just such a nice little size I love it this is a very autobiographical novel that honestly not a lot happens in it it's more of a like slice of life of rural countryside England. I know there is a TV series of this that it seems like more people have heard of and I'm just having read the book I'm like what happens in the series because nothing happens in the book and I give it my highest praises like this is the best book in which nothing happens that I've ever read. It just if you're the kind of person who loves teeny tiny little well written details about rural country life, you just like to curl up and sink into that atmosphere. This book is the best. And we have one of my favorite series of all time. So underrated. To me, this should be up there with Anne of Green Gables and Little House and other autobiographical children's novels that go from childhood into adulthood. Betsy Tacy. This is the this is the first of the high school books. It starts with Betsy Tacy, and then it goes all the way to Betsy's wedding. So it starts when she's five, and then it goes to her wedding. And these are by Maud Hart Lovelace. Who who grew up in Minnesota at the turn of the century, the turn of the previous century. <laughs> This is an older copy, but they have been reissued over the years, so they're not that hard to find. They're just, her family and her friends are just like the cutest, warmest, most endearing group of people. A lot of times you read books that take place in the past and you think quite rightly that you would never want to live in the past, even if you're entertained by the books. But in these books, like I genuinely kind of want to be there. And also you don't have to feel bad about it because Maud Hart Lovelace was very ahead Ahead of her time as far as like civil rights and the women in the book all have careers they aspire to. I mean they're not like in STEM but still they do grow up to be writers and opera singers and fashion designers and they're not just getting married and calling it a day. And there's a whole plot line about befriending an immigrant girl in like the Syrian community in Minnesota at the time. So I highly recommend all of these. I've reread them many times. I'm gonna recommend one of my own books because this is my channel and I can. This was one of my early YA novels. It could really, it could also just be like a cute adult romance. The protagonists are already old enough. I based it vaguely on Pride and Prejudice, but the heroine is a mermaid and she had a childhood friend who was a winged boy who would fly to like an island and hang out with her on the shore. She hasn't heard from him in a while and she's like all grown up now and she's wondering what happened to him. So she goes on land, which is, you know, difficult for her, but there is a way looking for him. 
and she finds that he is running his father's bookstore and that he is rather wrapped up in adult life and kind of arrogant. Actually, he was always kind of arrogant, but she is also looking for her sister who went off and married a human. So he's going to help her with that. And of course, they're going to fall in love and there's a bookstore and what, you know, what else do you want? This is my favorite of my young adult novels. And we have just an author that I find very kind of cozy in general. This is the one I happen to have on the shelf. Now I can't promise you that all of these are like 100% cozy and nothing bad happens in any of them. Some people have a very strict definition of what a cozy book is. I'm just telling you ones that I find to be like comfort reads and I don't remember a lot of strife or tension in them. But I haven't read this one in a while and I would also like to reread Eva Ibbotson's work. She had a number of books that were like these romances. They often take place in Europe and they have a lot of these wonderful little details of life in that place and they have really wonderfully realized side characters and they just they feel like eating a Viennese pastry. That's just like when I see them I want a good black forest cake or something. I, I don't know why. Just to me these books are pastry. One of my favorite kind of cozy fantasy series, Claire Dunkel's The Hollow Kingdom Trilogy. I wish that these books had gotten like more of their due. I love them. They have that kind of fairy tale quality and the banter between the main character and the goblin king who kidnaps her. I'm already kind of sold just from that. Their banter is just wonderful. I also really like that this book like does not shy away from like discussing the problematic aspects of a goblin king kidnapping you. It's very kind of blunt that this situation is not ideal. <laughs> But at the same time, the emotions that develop between them do feel very real. And the next couple books in the series, I also remember loving just as much. I've reread this one more recently. I know, again, I kind of want to reread them. There's too many books I want to reread as well as books I want to read for the first time. And we have a nonfiction book in here. We Took to the Woods by Louise Dickinson Rich. This is a kind of memoir, mem memoir, memoir. This takes place in Maine in the 1940s. Louise and her family have moved to very rural Maine. Like they are quite cut off. They only see like loggers and like a couple other people for a lot of the year, especially in winter. They're very isolated. It's very cold. But at the same time, their life just sounds so charming and her voice is so funny and you just kind of want to hang out with her even though I'm not sure she likes people that much, but she really captures like this like rural Maine in the 1940s, this kind of life that would probably be hard to even have anymore to be that cut off. There's a pet raccoon. There's a very vivid description of like log runs, town politics, just the logistics of country life. If you have like that fantasy of living in the country, but you don't actually really want to live in a cabin in the woods all by yourself or with your family, but you just like reading about it, this book is great. I have an original copy, which I found at a fabulous like estate sale on a house that was obviously owned by two gay men with amazing taste. I found this there, so I'll always treasure it kind of extra, but it has been reprinted and you can still get your hands on it. We have a couple of graphic novels. Amy Unbounded, The Londwig Blossoming by Rachel Hartman. This was her first book. Some of you may know Rachel Hartman as the young adult author of Serafina, Shadow Scale, and Tess of the Road. She has a very interesting take on dragons who appear a bit in this, but this is just kind of like a really cute graphic novel about a girl in a very, like it's kind of a love letter to a medieval world. And the characters feel real. It kind of reminded me in the same vein as like Catherine called Birdie, which I loved when I was younger. And also that just kind of like medieval fair charm. I also recommend the young adult books that followed it. She's also a wonderful world builder. And then Thieves and Kings. This is one of my favorite underrated graphic novels by Mark Oakley. This was on hiatus for a long time and I thought he was never going to finish it, but I just saw that he actually has a Patreon now and he is working on more. So yay! This book had a real like Studio Ghibli kind of feel to me. The way that he draws it just kind of reminds me of the Nauschka comics. It has these sections of text and then graphic novel parts and all the characters are just very cute and endearing. 
And there's some, some very intriguing elements in here that I'm dying to know what becomes of them all. There's kind of a semi-villainous, the shadow lady, but at the same time, she's very kind of compelling and likable. And then you have an absent-minded wizard who's super powerful. You've got like his little imp friend. There's two protagonists who are both really sweet. And it's just the world is very Studio Ghibli, that kind of like European seaside. What period is this? Maybe it's kind of evocative of like a 18th or 19th century. So there's four of them out, plus a little side story, and now he's working on more. So fingers crossed that I can get another volume. Those are my book recommendations. For the moment, I intend to do book recommendation videos here and there. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I hope you'll check out some of the books I mentioned. If you've read any of them, let me know what you thought. And if you have any other under the radar comforting book recommendations, I would love to hear them. I'm sure a lot of you would too. I'll see you next time. First of the college. Hello, baby. I don't know, baby.